Let's uh, look ahead to that with Edgar Miller, who's from the pro-Brexit advocacy group, Economists for Free Trade. He joins us now live from Westminster. Uh, good morning to you. Um, morning. 84 technical points of advice. That's what Dominic Raab will be uh, broadcasting today on advice as to how to deal with a no-deal Brexit. It sounds like that is the direction that the government is pursuing. Well, I think before we get involved with the details of these 84 items, a lot of which we don't know much about since they haven't published, uh, I think it's a very good thing that Number 10 and the EU are now beginning to take the idea of leaving without an EU trade deal seriously. Uh, this is something that we call a world trade deal. We think it is a very attractive option. Um, and. Um, it um, is something that um, uh, we should not be afraid of. Uh, given where we are, uh, the sensible thing for number 10 to do would be to move to a Canada Plus deal, which, after all, was offered by President uh, Trusk on March 7th. It's an existing deal. It provides virtually everything that was in the Lancaster House and Florence speeches of the Prime Minister, and that's the way she should go. But if not, then we should do a world trade deal, which means that we embrace global trade outside of the EU, global free trade, under WTO rules. Um, and this is uh, the way we should go. So uh, are you saying that, that a no deal Brexit actually is something that, that is desirable? It's an option rather than a, a fallback? Well, it would be better if we could do a Canada Plus deal, but that doesn't look like it's in the offing. A world trade deal preserves virtually everything that we have in a Canada Plus deal, plus other things. And don't forget that we would be able to, once we are out, negotiate an FTA with the EU with a leverage behind us rather than leverage against us, as we have now. Uh, and I suppose... Uh falling out uh, rather than uh, establishing a, a fully-fledged deal would avoid all those uh, nasty EU bills, the, the 40 billion for, for one. Well, one, it's a, you've made a very good point, Gillian. The, one of the things that's widely not understood is that if we leave, we are the net winner against the EU. Because of the way the tariffs work and the uh, balance of tariffs on both sides, and because if we leave now, we advance the benefits of leaving and we do not pay the $39 billion because we haven't done a deal, we calculate that the EU or that the UK would be a net winner on something on the order of £650 billion. Pounds. The EU would be a loser on the order of £500 billion. Pounds. And that is something that they, I think they understand very well. Unfortunately, not many people on our side seem to understand it um, uh, uh, from our point of view. That's a huge sum, 650 that's billion. A, uh, that's a swing of 1.1 trillion pounds. Right, that's a figure we will be examining uh, throughout the, the course of the day. Uh, thank you very much for speaking to us uh, this morning, Edgar Miller there. Thank you.